Nous sommes lundi. Es lunes. Get yo yo. It's Monday, and that means we get to be intentional about brain science. I'm going to teach you how your brain works so that learning in this class is super easy. Okay, and everything I teach you in this class, you're going to be able to transfer to your math class, to your science class, to your music class, to your PE class, to any class you're taking. Everything I teach you in here about brain science is going to help you in all of your classes. Today we are talking about the effective filter. This is a linguistics term. And what is a filter? Right, a filter stops things from coming through. Okay, so the effective filter is that little voice in your head that says, ooh, you know what, I want, don't want to say arre out loud because I can't say arre and it's going to sound stupid and everyone's going to laugh at me and it's better if I don't say it at all. And so if you don't say it, you never learn to say it, okay? So let me tell you a little story about myself to explain how it is we need to lower the effective filter. That's what we call it. We lower the effective filter means you're not listening to that little voice in your head anymore, okay? So this is me in, in college, all right? I'm in Japan, I'm going to college, and here's uh, one of my classmates, all right? And um, we lived about 40 minutes away from this really beautiful garden that just specialized in ume plum trees okay and it only blooms once a year and um my roommates wanted to go and uh i'm like okay sure so we hop on the train we go it's a 40 minute ride and it's raining 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 it's so miserable you can see we don't even want to stand on the ground it's so wet here but it's really gorgeous i mean look at that it's just gorgeous okay so here i am on this bridge and the bridge is kind of slippery and everything but you know, it's just very pretty. And my friends say, oh, look, there's some really pretty plum trees down there, but the path doesn't seem to be open. And um, it's really steep, this really steep area, and it looks very muddy and everything. And they're like, oh, I really wanna go see them. Oh, well, it's not open. And that's when I personally invented the phrase YOLO. And I'm like, yeah, let's go for it. Cause it's a 40 minute train ride you know, when is the next time we're going to be back here? When's the next time we're going to be back here in March? Let's go for it. And I fell right on my keister. And as I got up, I told my friends, Shashino tote kudasai, take a picture of me. Because I knew at that moment, I have a 40 minute train ride back. I'm going to be the only Caucasian on the train. Everyone is going to be staring at me. Look at this, a 40 minute train ride. Plus I got to walk to the bus stop from the train, get on the bus, take another 15 minute bus ride home. Got to walk through the campus to get to my dormitory. Everyone's going to be staring at me. At that moment, I knew that I was no longer embarrassed by anything. I was going to be doing stupid stuff. People were going to look at me and the only thing you could do is laugh it off, you know? Because there's constant, many, many, many times I was saying things wrong and people would look at me weird or they'd laugh at me or they'd fall down. Seriously, they'd fall down if I said things wrong, you know. So at this point, I realized, aha, I'm the best student in the world because I am never embarrassed now. I really like this quote from Steve Kaufman. Making mistakes in language learning is not only necessary, it's a good sign. If you're not making mistakes, you're not trying hard enough to use the language. Absolutely true. You gotta make mistakes. Do you know your brain rewires better when it makes mistakes than if it just did it perfectly? If it just did it perfectly, your brain would say, eh, I don't need to know that. I'm already good at it. It's only when you make mistakes that your brain says, ah, I'd better remember this for next time. Uh, this was actually from a, like a CEO article I found. You have to make mistakes, look like an idiot, and try again without even flinching. So if you wanna be a CEO of a company, this is something you need to be able to do. Uh, Dominic O'Brien, he was a world time memory champ, world memory champion eight times. Uh, and the world memory championships, I told you a little bit about it in a previous episode, but they're pretty cool people. Like they'll, they're not competing with each other. They're competing with themselves. Okay. So they're trying to make themselves better. And if somebody comes up and says, give me advice, they don't have any problem at all giving somebody else advice. Okay. So they're all buddies, all the people who are like competing with each other. And this other woman comes up to him and she says, I just can't get my speed any faster. 
I can only memorize 10 decks in six minutes, and then I just top out. I can't get any faster. And he says, well, how many mistakes are you making? And she says, none, I just told you. I'm not making any mistakes. I, this is the, my, my plateau. I've hit the plateau. I can't get any faster. He's like, that's your problem. You're not making any mistakes. You're not going to get any faster until you're making mistakes. If you're ambitious and willing to fail and respond well to failure, you can easily catapult yourself to the top of your field. That was another CEO article. All right, so we're going to practice saying the R sound, which is horrible in every language, okay? Spanish students, we're going to practice saying arre. I've already taught you how to say arre. I've given you like six different methods to do it. Let's practice it right now. French students, you're going to be working on air, okay? It's like that gurgle sound. Japanese students, we're going to do da di do de do, which is kind of halfway between, it's, it's almost a D sound, not quite, it's between R and L. And then I'm going to teach you dia du dio, which are blended sounds, okay? So let's practice that today. <laughs> <laughs> 